morning. <laughs> it is your girl, your diva and knowledge. Lady Mocha represent Mocha's Cafe. The empowerment is from Mocha to you with the knowledge and spiritual awareness. Wanted to report this breaking news immediately. Woman found dead after meeting older man on dating app, but family claimed cops didn't investigate because he is nice. A devastated family is searching for answers as to why the 23-year-old daughter was found dead in her apartment after meeting an older man on the dating app Bumble. Lauren Smith Fields was found unresponsive in her Bridgeport, New York home on December 12th. The unidentified man alerted the police to her death but was not taken in for questioning. An, uh, an autopsy has been completed, but the young woman's cause of death has not yet been released by the medical examiner. Investigators are also not commenting on the case. Smithfield's family has criticized the cops and her father says he has paid for a second autopsy as they claim they are not getting the answers they want from authorities. The family claims her death took place under mysterious circumstances. Without a doubt, we know that my daughter was not a drug user. And I had a second autopsy myself paid out of pocket because we felt so uncomfortable with the way it was handled. Her father ever told News 12. He blasted the police response in a sketching statement, claiming the family has been dealing with a very insensitive, condescending, and arrogant detective. The heartbroken dad added that he believed the family had not yet been given even basic courtesies by the authorities and that they were told to stop calling. It's killing me inside. I miss my baby, Mom Chantel Fields said. Life is not the same, and I don't know what I'm going to do after this. Older white male, her brother Lakeen Jetter, has also questioned why the older white male she met on the dating app is not a target of suspicion. I asked him about the guy. He just made it seem like the guy was a nice guy, nothing to investigate, he claimed of the cops. Smithfield's mom has written a letter to the police department pushing for answers on her daughter's case as local representatives speak out in support of the family. Councilwoman Maria Pereira told News 12 that the family deserved an apology after receiving no answers about the case. She sent a really well-written email. It was lengthy. It was extensive. It was very detailed. And I was shocked when she told me just yesterday she had not even received a response, the councilwoman said. Smithfield's family says she was a track star at Stanford High School and was currently attending community college. She had also reportedly started her own business to fund her education. Fans left tributes on 23-year-olds' YouTube and Instagram accounts as they mourn her loss. So beautiful had her the whole life ahead of her. Not fair, wrote one user. Completely unfair. Rest in peace, beautiful angel, another added. You will be missed, baby girl, wrote basketball player Karan Iverson. In her final post, Smithfields has several selfies with the caption, self-destructive, just days before her, attractive, her tragic death. Always smiling, she wrote in another post. The Sun contacted the Bridgeport Police Department for comment. In a statement in News 12, the city of Bridgeport said that a review of the case is underway. The Bridgeport Police Department takes these concerns very seriously. The command staff of the Detective Bureau is reviewing the handling of the case to ensure the best practices were and are being followed. It is imperative to note that the death of Lawrence Smith Fields remains an ongoing investigation, a statement added. Our department extends its deepest condolences to the family of Lauren. All right, y'all. So as y'all can see, <laughs> that was a lot to read this morning. But nevertheless, um, this is a very unfortunate and tragic situation. Um, this was a young woman in the prime of her life just beginning um, to transition slowly into womanhood. And unfortunately, she made a very, very bad decision. That caused her her demise. And this is starting to become a continuous issue with young women of all races. The same thing happened to Mercedes Moore. Um, and it's starting to become increasingly um, common, especially with young black women in the black community. Uh, but we do know it's all women of all races. So we're not going to just pick on black women. But I will say this. Black women, we are... Number one on the hit list um, as far as, you know, losing our lives when it comes to meeting these men in a dating app. Now, several things I wanted to discuss pertaining to this particular situation. Um, first of all, we are living in some times in which um, a lot of young women, we as older women, we're not giving them the correct information when it comes to telling them to be concerned about their safety when it comes to telling them about how they need to be very careful with the choices they make. Um, it's a lot of us as older women 
who have a lot of influence over how young women of this generation think. If you have daughters, you have nieces, um, even if you don't have a daughter, you, you, you influence one way or another. We have an influence, especially if we are social media content creators. There's a lot of young black women out here who listen to us. It's some that may listen to me and some that may listen to other female content creators. Now, one of my concerns is, um, basically, allegedly, um, it's been stated per the victim's brother that the man that is in question that they believe had everything to do with the death of their loved one, um, Lauren here is a white male. And the reason why I wanted to address this several reasons, but this is one of the reasons I wanted to address this. This is the reason why we don't need to teach young black women to only be cautious of black men to only be cautious of a certain group of men. And I'm not knocking what other female content creators do. Um, I feel like all of us have something we could contribute um, as far as knowledge and wisdom to the black community. So I'm not knocking um, women who do preach those narratives or whatever. That is their choice. But I will say this. When we preach these narratives that young black women only need to be cautious of women, men within their own race, it makes them easy bait for men of other races. And I will say that too with a lot of the black male content creators. Um, black male content creators are always preaching a narrative to black men to be cautious of black women, that black women, we are a threat to them. We will try to take them down. Um, we don't mean them any good. And here it is. These young black men who listen to these narratives, they go out here and, and date these white women or non-colored women, Latino, Puerto Rican women, and find out that they still get used, they can still get played, they can still be taken advantage of, you know, they can still be um, used as far as their success and whatever goals they're trying to accomplish by any woman of any color, because it has nothing to do with color, has everything to do with character. They get out there and they find out the wrong way because, again, they're listening to these uh, YouTube pastors who claim that they are dating experts and claim that they have the best interests of black men by telling black men to stay away from black women instead of these men teaching men period to stay away from women that just aren't any good don't focus so much on the character the color focus on her character look at check out what she is as a woman check out who she is get to know her for who she is not because of her skin color i saw that to say this the black community is always trying to make it seem like uh Anything outside of the black community is a safe haven. Um, you got black men again that are teaching young black men to stay away from colored women. And you also have black women that are telling young black women, uh, to stay away from black men or colored men. And they get out there into the world and don't realize that there are devils in so many different colors. The devil doesn't have a color, okay? The devil could be white, the devil could be black, the devil could be Latino, the devil could be Arab. It does not matter. You have so many demons that are out here and you cannot just look at how a person looks anymore. Looks are very deceiving. You can't figure because you're with a white guy, you're safer. He's not going to harm you. He's not going to hurt you. You're with a white woman. You're safe. She's not going to gold dig from you. She's not going to use you. She she loves you for who you truly are, unlike these black women. Um, th This is the black community that's poisoning the upcoming black generation and giving them misinformation and when these young people go out here into the world they think they are playing it safe as long as they're outside their race again i would say you're not always safe because you're outside of your race so this young black woman here met this older white male um, through an app called Bumble, never heard of it, but it's a lot of dating apps, and that is the thing a lot of people are doing. A lot of people are so comfortable with these dating apps, and I cannot understand it for the life of me why so many people are comfortable with meeting people um, personally that you only met through a dating app. You know, to me, I think, because uh, I know eventually you're going to have to meet that person in person, but it's the way that you do it. I don't think you need to go travel to another state where you have no family. You're meeting this person personally in some clo in a closed um 
perimeter when nobody knows what's going on, like a hotel, your family don't know where the hell you're going at, people don't know you're going to meet this person or whatever. Um, we just have to be really mindful. This young woman, like a lot of these young women out here, she probably felt like um, she was going to uh, get an easy hit. You know, she older white guy. You know, we know we are known that uh, well, a lot of young black women are being taught that um, older white men have money. You know, and of course, I'm sure that was one of the reasons she went to go meet him. I'm sure she didn't meet him just to go meet him. And again, you know, a lot of these Instagram models, that's what they do. They use their looks to get by, to get over on men who got money, um, to get over on men who they feel like are desperate, got low self-esteem. Now, I don't know this young lady's motives. It's still unclear as to why she went to go meet this man. But this is what a lot of the young women are doing in this generation. They're trying to find the highest bidder. They're trying to find a simp who's going to invest into them, give them money, pay their rent, buy them cars. Um, it's, it's that video vixen you know, uh, mentality that as long as I look good and I got a nice body, um, I can get a simp investor. I, I can get a simp investor. Somebody's going to invest into me. They're going to pay my bills. And what a lot of these young women are not being taught is, yes, you may find a simp investor, but some of these simp investors are crazy. Some of them are mentally deranged. Um, that's unfortunately what happened to the young lady Mercedes Moore, who was a very beautiful, attractive um, Instagram model. She had the body. She had the looks. She knew she had all kind of men of all colors lusting after her. And she used it to her advantage. But what she used to her advantage also ended up being that very thing that caused her to her demise. So as women... We have to teach these younger women that are coming up underneath us that uh, th this this game, these games that we're playing with these men out here, thinking that because we look good, we can meet up with them, hook up with them, and these guys break us off with some money. These guys become our little johns. They become our simple investors. Uh, we're in a generation where it's very, very dangerous to play that game now because you have some men that are very weak. Um, they put a lot of money into you. And they can't take the L. They can't take being used. They can't take um, being manipulated. You know, back in the days, you know, I know I, I, I wasn't smart. I didn't have the knowledge that I have now. Um, listening to older females, you know, being around, you know, my friends influencing me. You know, we were taught that, you know, you meet a guy, you get what you can get out of him. You know, um, have fun, take him for what he can give you. I have done it. I could have very well been this young lady by by the grace of God, God just spared me. I've met guys that was simple, who um I was able to get money out of and didn't have to give him anything in return. But sooner than later, um once a man keeps investing in you and he realizes he's not getting anything out the deal, things can kind of go left, you know. But at least back then, you know, guys used to could take a L, you know what I mean? And um they would just move along. But now, you know, these men are built different. Like you got like a lot of women that are built different. This generation is just different. Um, these men are killing women now. And the thing about it is, um, but a lot of women have to understand you have some men who have a, a, a psychotic fetish. Um, they get off on killing women. They get off on murdering women. And they know women are easy targets, especially through these dating apps. You have some men who just love to kill. They get a sick thrill out of killing women. Um, like the Craigslist killer. This man was going around using Craigslist as a dating app. That was when, that was when Craigslist used to have the little dating men seeking women, women seeking women and all this and that. He was the reason Craigslist shut that dating category down because he used to have a dating category where not only, um, because Craigslist is known to where you can buy things or purchase things, but it used to be a dating app also. After the Craigslist killer, they shut that down because um, he was intentionally meeting women just to kill them. That's all. He just got a thrill out of killing them. And then when he finally got caught, now mind you, this was a man who was engaged. He was a fiance, white male, <laughs> coincidentally, who already had a who already had a fiance. He was meeting women just to kill them. 
just to kill him. When women didn't even get a chance to use him, lie to him, or take him for anything. He just loved to kill women. And this is something that a lot of women need to be educating a lot of these young females about. You have to realize these young women are not understanding. They're they're at their prime. They're thinking their looks everything. We all been young. We've all been there thinking because you're beautiful, you're stunning. You can get over on these guys and get what you want to get out of them, and then you break out and you leave. But women now, these young women, and I tell my daughter the same thing. I tell my daughter. Um, you know, when she meets certain guys, she has these older men who be wanting to spend money on her and stuff like that. And I try to tell her, look, be careful. Do not take these dudes money. If you're not feeling them, you don't like them or whatever, don't be taking their money because they're going to look for something in return. They're not giving you money just because you're beautiful. Okay. They're going to look for something. But in this case, we really don't know, um, what the purpose of meeting him was but nine times out of ten i'm sure is that um she probably thought this was those older white males who uh, you know simple-minded and she can possibly use you know um as a sugar daddy that's what i'm assuming because most 23 year olds think this way you know and i'm not judging her or bashing her for it but um at this age that's how a lot of them think they're looking for a simple investor they're looking for somebody you think he oh he can't get it up you know sugar daddy ain't gonna want no sugar you know what i mean uh, a lot of cases times a lot of young women be trying to find a diabetic daddy uh, a daddy who don't want no sugar you know what i mean and a lot of times these young women they underestimate these old men thinking because they old some of these young older men can't get it up. They ain't gonna want no sex out you. Um, some Viagra done messed up the game. Viagra killed the game for a lot of the young women this day and era. Back in my day, um, uh, when the older man couldn't get up, get it, get it up, there was no medication. There was nothing for him to get it up. Now Viagra has changed the game. These old men be wanting to smash. Um, or if if not smashing. You have some old men who are uh, who are still psychotic. You can't think because a man's seventy or eighty that he ain't mentally disturbed. Something ain't wrong with him. Um, a psychotic man is a psychotic man, and a psychotic man comes of all ages, all colors, all ethnic backgrounds. It does not matter if he's black, he's white, he's twenty three, he's um seventy three. You cannot underestimate these um men. So she was found dead in her apartment. So a couple of things could have happened here. Uh, maybe this was a dude that she was, you know, making a, 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 um, a sexual like exchange. You know, it, it could have been one of those things for her to feel that comfortable and meet him at her apartment. Um, she probably was going to let dude smash. But this is the crazy part what a lot of young women are not understanding. Some dudes don't want to smash. Some dudes just want to kill you. I've, I've seen another story in which a black woman, except this was a black guy, uh, and she was a mother. She allowed him to her apartment because she wanted to smash. She met the guy through online. She wanted to smash. Guess what? He didn't have sex with her. He just killed her. Um, when they did an autopsy, they didn't find no DNA in her body. He didn't even have sex with her. He killed her. Oh, and then he turned around and robbed her. Robbed her for money. <laughs> and, and I'm not joking about this, and I don't think it's funny, but the irony is just crazy because some dudes it ain't always about sex. And I know that is the, 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 the narrative that a lot of women have been preaching to younger women. These dudes just want some ass. These dudes just want just want to smash. These dudes, some of them don't want to smash. They just want to kill. You got some dudes out here that have six sick psychopath thriller tendencies, like a damn thriller movie, like like a damn psycho lifetime, you know, actor thriller killer. You know what I mean? You you got some men that are just thriller killers. They don't want no sex from you. They don't want no head from you. They just want to kill you. Some men get a thrill out of killing women. I know because when I was in corrections, I seen men come in there. And when I read their records, uh, uh, strangulation, strangulation is a very popular thing. They love to strangle women to their death. Have a lot of that. 
You have some men that have a sick passion. They get a sick passion out of putting their palms around a woman's neck and just choking her out to her to her eyes roll to the back of her head. They want to choke out, get a thrill out of seeing a woman take her last breath. Get a thrill out of overpowering a woman because men are physically stronger. He don't want the sex. He want to kill. And that's something that uh, a lot of these young women need to be cautious of. You're meeting a man on a dating app. You think he just, you, you, all you got to do is give him some so he can break you off some bread. You get this dude alone in your apartment. Nobody knows what's going on. Your neighbor's not suspecting anything because they see you willingly walking this man in your house. Nobody's seeing him chase and run you down in your apartment like your life is in danger. So none of your neighbors have no clue that you're getting choked out in your own apartment. That you're getting choked out in a hotel. Mercedes Moore, God bless her soul. Um, like I said, that was the Instagram model. She willingly brought this man over in her gated community where you need security access. Nobody suspected that that white straggly looking dude was going to kill her. Because she let him in there willingly. Only difference was she rejected him and made him feel some type of way in which he felt that he needed to kill her. He he left a note. I mean, he didn't like a note, but he wrote a message on the wall behind letting people know she used me. You know, I liked her. I was, you know, I can't record, quote exactly what he said, but he left something behind so people could have an idea as to why he took it to that extreme. The man felt used. He felt rejected. He given this woman all this money. Now, I'm not saying this is the case with this um, young lady here. But this is why women, we don't need to preach the narrative that, you know, our black women are safe if they date outside the race. Because some of these white guys, they ain't all well put together. No more than... A lot of the black men we like to talk poorly about. You cannot underestimate any of these dudes. None of them. When you keep focusing on one race, you thinking just one race of men or one race of women until the other race, you cross that side and you see it ain't all what you thought it was. Now you want to change your narratives. Now, you see all of what you've been promoting until you fall prey to it, until you become the victim of it. Um, you don't need to promote narratives to where the younger generation thinks they're safe by stepping outside of their race. So that, that is definitely one of my concerns with this situation. Um, I don't know if she felt because this was an older white man. He wasn't going to be dangerous. He was going to be harmful. I don't know what convinced her or what made her believe that was safe. But um, what I do know is that her family is left behind not getting the answers they need to find peace and closure with her death because this is the other thing because basically i'm just going by what i can interpret the investigators um the law the authorities aren't taking it taking this young woman's death seriously because supposedly um, they think this dude is a white guy. I mean, they think this dude is, 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 um, is not a threat because he's a white male. When her brother, Lakeem Jetter, a question why, why the older white man she met on a dating app is not being targeted for suspicion. 
the he supposedly allegedly the cops said he just made it seem like the guy was a nice guy nothing to investigate so this is the other thing depending on what type of county you live in what kind of state you from um certain counties have a high level of racism you know, racism exists everywhere, but in some counties, in some states, racism is at an all-time high. So, I don't know much about Bridgeport, New York, but it could be one of them counties in which if, the, if predominantly most of the authorities are white, they may not feel the urgency to really investigate or look into this matter. This is another thing. Um, a lot of times when you think you're safe outside the race, in many cases, they have an advantage of getting over on you. Because, let's face it, the way the system is structured, the system does not really take us into account. And that, that's all I'm going to say. We all adults, all, all of us are smart. Y'all know exactly where I'm going with this. I ain't got to break down the details. Y'all know. In most cases, the system is, 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 is like bleach. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just made to enhance the whites. Okay? So, we already know. We are already at a disadvantage. So, keep in mind, when this non-colored man or this non-colored woman harms you, takes your life, causes you an injury, you may not get the justice you truly deserve. Let's just be frank. Let's get all the kumbaya and all that out the way. Let's just be frank. Justice has not always been in our favor. Okay? Rather, if that's criminal or civil, you can have a civil lawsuit. And depending on what color that person is in that role, Because let's face it, we have a lot, even though the law is supposed to be equal and fair, it's a lot of people in law that have undercover prejudices. And they, and they can know their race is dead wrong, but because the victim or the plaintiff is non-colored, depending on that person's per personal prejudices, in that robe behind that bench. Because we all are prejudiced. Even I am to a degree. But only difference is I don't let it consume my judgment. When you let prejudice consume your judgment. Where you feel safe outside your race. You feel like oh no they'll never do that. You better off with this color color man because he ain't going to do what, what, what these other colored men do are. You better off dealing with this non-colored woman because colored women, they more of a threat to you. When you let it consume you to where you completely eliminate them, exempt them from being users, exempt them from not being capable of harming you, you set yourself up for failure. You set yourself up for a disastrous situation because you're not keeping your guard up. You know, you're not keeping your guard up. You you think you you think you're safe because you're outside of your race. And a lot of people think they're safe until the law gets involved. And the law don't want to hear you what you got to say. Because you don't have the complexion for the connection. And see, this is the other part that a lot of these content creators don't want to talk about. They want to give praise and worship service for the white man. Praise and worship service for the white woman. To only find out now that you are on the opposite fence. And you need to be defended by this non-colored individual. Uh, the law ain't trying to hear it. If you forget you a Negro, you will find out. The law will remind you that you are a Negro. 
whether you're a black male Negro or a black female Negro. You get up in the court of law and, and you got to go against Aunt B or Zaddy or whatever. They going to show you how black you are in case you don't forget. So this is a definite unfortunate situation. Um, we need to teach our young women. Um, don't think because a man is, is, is outside of your race that he's safe. He's not capable of harming you. He's not capable of hurting you. There are non-colored men that are rapists. There are non-colored men that are, 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 are um, murderers, killers. They come in, killers and murderers come in all sorts of flavors. So yeah, as a young woman, please do not underestimate a, a guy because he's white and he looks nerdy. You know, he may look a little creepy. He looked like he can't hurt a fly. You know, Jeffrey Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer was very nerdy. Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, didn't have that, you know, killer, you know, psychopath look. And this man was going around chopping up bodies and eating them. You know, so you can't underestimate these people. Um, Dating apps. Dating apps. Stop meeting people, person that you're meeting through dating apps. What you see is not always what you get. Um, you have a lot of the problem with these dating apps. They don't do background checks. And truth be told, they can't catch everything. Um, not all of these psychopaths who enter these spaces, these dating apps, um, a lot of them cannot be detected. You have to realize dating apps, anybody and everybody can use them. Everybody has access to them. So that's something we got to be mindful of. Um, so it's very unfortunate this young lady, she lost her life. And I know a lot of sisters weren't going to speak on this particular subject again because it's a lot of narratives being preached that, um, you know, zaddies are always protective of black women. And that is not always the case. Um, this is a clear indication. And there's several cases out there um, in which uh, a lot of these young women, you know, step out and meet these men. And that still doesn't exempt you from... Even this case doesn't exempt you from, you know, uh, possibly any man of any color. So I still don't give black men a pass and say they aren't capable of doing this as well. But we also have to keep in mind, we can't trust these non-colored men either. You know, um, you have to pay attention. These, dem these demons are listening in the hidden spaces. They're listening to young women being taught that we're supposed to trust them. We're supposed to trust non-colored men. We're supposed to trust men who got money. Um, You got women who think because a man has a lot of money, he ain't going to kill you. Like millionaires don't kill. You know what I mean? So um, a lot of us have to be very careful with the type of information we're giving these young women out here. And young women don't think because you're beautiful, you're glamorous, you have a nice body, you go meet these men and they will not harm you. They will not take advantage of you. Um, they will not take your life. You don't know what you're dealing with. I don't care how nice they talk to you. I don't care how they look. You cannot go by what people look like anymore. You cannot go by because a man look old and he on crutches or, you know, you think you can overpower them or use them and get over on them and they won't harm you. They won't hurt you. I worked in a correctional facility where I've seen men from all walks of life, from all ages, from all colors. Um, they, you cannot discriminate when it comes to your safety. Whenever you meet a man, uh, if you're going to date on a dating app, for one, you don't need to be meeting him at your personal apartment. Too many women are doing that. You're bringing these guys to your personal domain. Um, get to know them for a while. If you're going to meet them, you're going to date them because, of course, you do eventually have to meet that person in person. Pick a public place. Don't pick a place where no one's not going to see you with this man. Also, alert your family. Alert your girlfriends. Whoop de woo. I met this guy here. This is information. This is Facebook page. You know, hell, if you can get his damn tag number, however, whatever you can get from this man, let somebody know. Let your homegirl know. Let your let your let your um friends know. Let somebody know that you're going to go meet this man undercover. Um, a lot of times I will say this. A lot of times these women will not tell anybody because they're going to do something sneaky. Anyway. Um, this is the vibe that I'm getting. I'm not sure if this is what this young lady was doing. It could have been a sexual transaction going down. Probably thought she could have got away with giving this old man some and he break off with a nice chunk of change. That That's probably why 
her family, her mom or her daddy didn't know about it. Um, a lot of these young women, they live undercover lives, but it's not really undercover. Once you're a lot of these women, let's face it, a lot of these Instagram models, a lot of them are prostituting on the side. Let's just call it for what it is. I don't know if this young lady is doing it, but I will say this. A lot of these young women, they don't tell their parents what the hell they be doing. I, my daughter's 20. I really don't know what she's doing. I'm, I'm hoping she tells me everything, but I really don't know. These young women out here thinking uh, they can manipulate these grown men and get these men and all these young guys and take them for what they got. And these young men, all these older dudes, these men, you know, catch on that they're being used and they'll hurt them. You know, or in some cases, some men just love to kill women. It's a sick fetish. It's a sick thrill. That just comes with it. Um, the law, like I said, is not really getting involved because they don't feel like this old white man is a threat. So they're not doing much to try to give this family peace of mind. And um, this young lady, she's gone. You know, her life, you know, has been erupted at such a young age. And I'm sure she has so much more to live for. And that's what young people have to realize. Sometimes you don't get a do-over. Some mistakes you make, you are stuck with. Um, there is no shoulda, coulda, woulda. Sometimes you take an L, and in this case, her L cost her her life. Okay? So anyway, y'all, I'm going to be doing a lot of uploads today. Today is going to be um, Mocha's Triple Shot Dose. Uh, I'm going to be uploading two more contents. So if y'all haven't already, please make sure y'all subscribe because, honey, we got a lot of things to talk about. And um, I didn't want to chop it all up into one um upload we're going to talk about dr dre's wife um who well ex-wife who finally got that um hundred million dollars 100 million dollar settlement and she's already out here uh posting thirst trap pictures and everything so now that she's got her money honey um mama's about to turn over a new leaf honey so um dr dre better get ready not that he's worried about it i'm sure but it's interesting how a lot of these women once they finally win a, win a divorce settlement, they start putting out them, them thirst, you know, them thirst trap photos out. She's trying to already lure her next um victim <laughs> into her web. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and they're also going to talk about today um four officers who got terminated smuggling drugs into their correctional facility. So make sure you ladies and you guys subscribe if you haven't already. Before y'all leave, please hit that likes up for me i would appreciate it it's free it's not going to charge you anything ladies if you haven't subscribed already please make sure you subscribe to my mocha ladies lounge channel my channel specifically for ladies ladies content only so make sure y'all subscribe to that as well so anyway y'all i got to go get my nails done i got a key sweat concert i'm going to be catching tonight so with that being said uh it's your girl lady mocha remember i'm gonna always pour you a cup of truth i'm gonna always bake you off a slice of knowledge and again ladies please be careful out there with these dating apps and men y'all be careful as well because you have some women out here who also do dating apps and they be meeting you guys and set y'all up and get robbed and all kind of crazy stuff so y'all just be careful with these goddamn dating apps all right y'all be safe i'll talk to you soon take care Bye.